May 6th, a sunny day in contrast to the gray skies of yesterday. Even though this is the last day of Golden Week, the Juness food court seems pretty quiet. Normally, it would be even more crowded than usual, but the reason it's empty is obvious at a glance. The people fled into the store like a receding tide, afraid of the bizarre crew who had just showed up. This includes a man covered by not much except a cape, a costumed hero, a woman in thick fur despite the summer heat, and two robots. Oh, it looks like the place is all ours. Is management gonna be okay with this? Uh, it's usually more crowded. My dad's gonna kill me if he finds out about this! Wait, is this my fault? Even Yosuke seems at his wit's ends as he answers Junpei-san. Teddy's in his natural costume rather than normal clothes, but thanks to the idiosyncrasies of the shadow operatives, he doesn't stand out much at all. After the night we solved that case, we decided to take this opportunity to throw a celebration party with everyone. I don't know the details of how it got started, but since Labrys wanted it to be at some place bustling, Yosuke took the bold step of deciding to hold it here. What I want to know is, how did it not occur to him that this would happen? Uh, well then, it's a great day out, and... It's so played out, Yosuke-senpai! Just hurry up and get things started. I'm starving. Ugh, I give up. You do it, partner. Me? In addition to our usual members, the shadow operatives joining in has made our group pretty big. And Yosuke gives up as everyone stares at him amidst the catcalls. Oh well. If someone falls, then another will follow them up. That's how our investigation team rolls, after all. Okay, here goes. One. Two. <laughs> The modest party kicks off with a toast. No one must have gotten any sleep last night, but they're all having fun chatting. Some are reuniting with friends they haven't seen in a while, and others are meeting new people for the first time. My, it's hot today. Yukatan, aren't you hot in that costume? You could unzip the suit just a little bit. Whoa, hey! Don't touch that! Are you hot, Teddy? I'll open up your zipper for you. Here we go! Lavi <laughs> Chan, it, it got open that way! No! Huh? It came off. <laughs> the pretty boy missing can't come out now! Speaking of pretty boys, that definitely applies to Ken Kun. He's got like this natural aura around him. I think you're right. He seems like someone you just can't resist looking after. Did someone say my name? Oh wow, you're right! His skin is clearer than the average girl's too! Uh-huh? What? <laughs> you're after my position as pretty boy, aren't you, Ken Ken? I won't let you get away with this! <sighs> I knew I should have brought a change of clothes. I'm sticking out like a sore thumb. Might as well put on my mask since that might actually help. Wait. Huh? Where's my mask? Interesting. It really limits your field of vision. If I wear it during my training, it'll really help for low visibility situations. What kind of situations are those? People will call the police on you if you train in that. Whoa! It looks surprisingly good on you, Master. You look like a comic book hero. It seems they have a good master-disciple relationship going. You're an engineering student, Bukasan? I'm hopeless at math, so I really admire girls who are strong in the sciences. It's nothing, really. You can be good at it, too, once you get the hang of it. Hey, what do engineering students do, anyway? Do you know, Yukiko? Maybe they do experiments. You know, like adding secret ingredients to dishes? So that was an experiment. W what kind of guy do you go for, Mitsuru-san? Are you engaged or something? Me? I did have someone like that in the past, but all I can focus on right now are my missions. Ooh, you've got guts, kid. 
Taking a shot at Mitsuru Senpai and all this chaos, kid. She's a tough one, so uh, be prepared. What? Iori! <laughs> You're so funny, Jinpei-san. I think you might be one of the top two funniest people I know. Huh? What's this? Is the lovely Rosette actually complimenting me? She's not complimenting you at all. So who's the other one? What are y'all looking at me for? Kinda rude, don't you think? Uh, hey, Yukiko-senpai. Can I pet him now? He says he wants to stay here a bit longer. Reikengoromaru? At least learn his actual name! You understood that? That's why there are some cases where one can't help but to take drastic action. I see. Impressive, Naoto-san. You really live up to the Shirogane name. Well, it's a bit of a dirty tactic, but in certain pressing circumstances... Mm hmm? Impressive... pressing? Naoto-san, was that a pun just now? It's well over the phoneme threshold. Huh? Of course not. It was just a coincidence. We've been fighting all throughout Golden Week, and we're only just now getting a moment to catch our breaths. The party goes on, with the usual drifts from topic to topic. I eventually notice that Labrys has stepped away from everyone to stand alone in the corner of the food court, so I go to talk to her. What's the matter, Labrys? Oh, I was just looking out at the town. I didn't get a really good look at it the other day. So I want to take it in as much as I can now. Labrys gazes past the fence into the distance. The area all around here is just an ordinary country town. It's hard to think that there's anything novel about it. But this is Labrys, who's been asleep for over ten years. Everything she sees must be fresh and new to her. Ah, what do you see? <laughs> lots of things! There's tons of people, everyone living their life to their fullest. Hey, Yukon. Thanks for everything. Labrys suddenly bows formally to me. Did we do something? Is she just thanking us for helping her out? It was you who helped us out this time, Labrys. We're even now. But Labrys slowly shakes her head. I guess that wasn't what she meant. So, what then? I can't think of anything else she could be thanking us for. Nah, that's not what I meant. I slept for so long that everything's a first for me. Like having a celebration party with so many folks. Huh. Well, are you enjoying it? For sure. Everyone seems like they're having fun, so that makes me happy. And there's something I figured out, too. You guys and all them shadow operatives might not be together all the time, but that doesn't matter. Labrys and I look back towards the group. There's no investigation team or shadow operatives anymore, only a cheerful time shared between friends. The bonds we forged won't disappear, no matter how far apart we may be. That's something I learned from Mitsuru-san and her people. They all went their separate ways, but they reunited here even after quite some time, because of this case. I hope our investigations team will be like them from now on. I think we have it in us. What happened over the last day was our first step towards that goal. I agree, but doesn't the same go for us since we got to meet during Golden Week? You're right! We promised to meet again, and that that was literally just the other day? Here I am again. It was tough, but fun too. That's why I want to thank you. I could say the same to you. A smile naturally forms on both our faces. After Labrys has a good laugh, she looks straight at me. I'm sure Shokun will be okay. Hmm? He might have lived all alone without anyone to talk to, but we're there for him now. Yeah, Sho's journey's just getting started. We can change as much as we want by learning from other people. You got that right. Labrys mumbles to herself and looks into the distance once again. Her expression is bright. It's like she really is human. And I have no doubts that Sho can make just as dramatic a transformation. I'm gonna do my best too. It truly is a wonderful day out. The sun's risen high up in the sky, casting strong shadows on the rooftop. The clear skies of Inaba look as though they're blessing our futures. <laughs>